Hello, children. Hope you are safe, healthy, and happy at home. In the previous class, we had learned about writing diary entries. I hope you must have started writing your diaries and must have started recording your experiences, your emotions, and your feelings. You must continue doing that. The woods are lovely, dark, and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Dear children, can you guess what am I going to teach you today? I'm sure many of you must have guessed it right. Poems. Right. Today, I'm going to teach you poetry. Children, poems are one of the best tools for learning a language and also creating love for language. You must have studied in your primary classes the NCRT textbooks. And if you remember, in the NCRT textbooks, before the poetry section, it would have written, read and enjoy. That means the poems were meant for enjoying and it was for pleasure and it was for you to be happy. And that is the reason why right from the pre-primary classes, you start learning a language, especially if your teacher is teaching you English, they teach you rhymes. They begin by teaching rhymes and that is because uh, you love singing and when you sing a poem or when you sing a rhyme, you learn them very fast. You might remember many of your uh, rhymes which you had learned in pre-primary or some of the poems which your teacher might have sung to you. Many of the poems can be put into tunes for you to make it interesting. So once you sing the poem, you learn it very fast and also you remember it. So dear children, before moving ahead, let's try to understand what are the objectives of learning a poem. Poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. William Wordsworth. Let's now look at the objectives of poetry. When you learn a poem, what do you learn? You learn to appreciate the poem, to understand the thought and imagination contained in the poem, to appreciate the rhyme and rhythm and style of the poem, to train the emotions, feelings and imagination, to develop the aesthetic sense, to create love for English poetry. So we had now looked at what are the objectives of learning a poetry and what are the things you develop or what are the skills you develop as you learn many poems that are there in your syllabus. Dear children, it's not that you limit yourselves to the poem mentioned in your syllabus. I would recommend whenever you learn a particular poem and you understand the theme or the message conveyed in the poem, maybe you can find more poems related to those themes and develop your uh, poetic or the aesthetic sense or the appreciation for poems and maybe you will be able to develop in you also uh, more of emotions, feelings and imagination which in turn will help you also to write your own poems. Now today while we are learning poems and the various methods and the various uh, figures of speech and the rhyming words, uh, I hope you will be able to write your own poems. You can begin with very simple poems, you know, using rhyming words. So once we finish today's lesson, I'm sure you will develop the confidence that you too can write poems, you can appreciate poems, you can try to understand the feelings and emotions that the poet has tried to put in the poem using various strategies or techniques. Dear children, when a poet writes a poem, or he puts his thoughts, emotions, and feelings uh, in the form of a poem, 
as I told you, he uses various techniques or you can say tools to make the poem more interesting and to make it uh, understandable for you so that you can comprehend the message, you can comprehend the theme and you can also uh, develop an interest in you for the theme that the author has tried to put forward before you in the form of a poem. So in class 9th this year, let me tell you, the CBC has tried to increase the number of poems in your syllabus. This year you have 10 poems in your syllabus, all of which are of different style, different themes and of different nature. Some are short, some are long, some are uh, in the form of a ballad, some are in the form of, uh, uh, you know, it has got a different style. Therefore, let's try to understand what are the figures of speech or what are the poetic devices the poets use to make it more interesting. And in order to understand the poem well, we need to know these figures of speech and understand them. And while we are reading the poems at home, try to figure out the poetic devices used by the poet to make the poem more interesting for you to read. So now let's look at the figures of speech which are used by poets while writing poems and try to understand them. Children, though there are many figures of speech, but I have chosen only those figures of speech which you need to understand uh, for classes 9th and also for class 10th which have been uh, used in the poetry section of your syllabus. So we'll be looking at some of the figures of speech which are often uh, there in the poems and you need to uh, answer the questions sometimes based on the figures of speech. So the first figure of speech is simile. A simile is a comparison between two unlike things using the words like or as. When the poet compares two things in a poem or in a particular a line or lines of the poem, when you see a comparison between two things uh, and the poet has used like or as. For example, as white as snow, as wise as an owl, like a pearl in the ocean. So whenever you see any comparison using like or as, that figure of speech is known as simile. Next is metaphor. A metaphor is also a comparison between two unlike things or ideas, but it is without the use of like or as. For example, the world is a stage. Here, though the meaning is the world is like a stage, when we read this sentence, the world is a stage. Uh, what does it mean to us? That the world is like a stage, but like has not been written there. But still we understand that the world has been compared to a stage. So here the comparison is without the use of like or as. Therefore, this figure of speech is known as metaphor. Uh, other examples are she's a night owl. That means she's like a night owl. He was a lion in the battlefield, which means he fought like a lion in the battlefield, but like has not been written there. So children, metaphor is a comparison without the use of like or as. Next is alliteration. Alliteration is a repetition of the beginning sounds of words in a line. Uh, it could also be words beginning with the same sounds. For example, the first one, she sells seashells on the seashore. So you can see the sound sh, she sells seashells on the seashore. So the sound sh and sir have been repeated in the same line. 
So the words which have the same sounds beginning with letters having the same sounds are known as alliteration. Most of the time in order uh, to make the poem more beautiful the poets use this poetic device. For example the second one Nick needed new notebooks. So the sound N, Nick needed new notebooks. So you can see the sound, uh, the letters beginning with N and the sound N has been repeated in the same line. The next one, Walter wondered where Winnie was. Again here, the words beginning with the letter W and the sound W. Walter wondered where Winnie was. So children, alliteration is the repetition of the words with the same sound or the words beginning with the same letters with the same sounds in a particular line. The next figure of speech is personification. Personification is giving human qualities to non-living things or ideas. For example, uh, you have the habit of watching many cartoons. In many of the cartoons, the animals are given human qualities. Or in many of the poems, you might also have read in the previous classes, the animals or inhuman or inanimate things are given human qualities, okay? They are made lively, right? For example, uh, there is a poem, Brook, right? Uh, where the river is personified because the river uh, talks about its journey, the river uh, gets angry, the river uh, passes slowly and in this way the river has been personified. The other examples here are the flowers nodded, okay, the snowflakes danced, you know, so as if the snowflakes are human beings and they are dancing. The thunder grumbled as if the thunder was a human being uh, like you and me and it grumbled and it got angry. The next figure of speech is onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is a term for a word that sounds like what is what it is describing. For example, when in the lines of poem you can feel the sounds uh, with the words used by the poet, for example, buzz, whoosh, click, okay, the tapping sound, the tapping feet, so the clapping hands. For example, the words which create some sounds in your mind, that particular poetic device is known as onomatopoeia, repetition. Children, when a particular word is repeated in the lines of a poem or maybe in a text also. When words are repeated in a line, it is known as repetition. For example, water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. So here the word water has been repeated in a line. And the second one, one of the famous uh, poems of Robert Frost, which I uh, quoted in the beginning, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. Here, the word miles and sleep have been, uh, even before or to and go have been repeated. So, dear children, when in a particular line, words, the same words are repeated again and again. This uh, figure of speech is known as repetition. Next, refrain. Now, what is refrain? Now, we learn that when a particular word is repeated, it's called repetition. But refrain is a particular, uh, in a particular line, when a particular line is repeated, it is known as refrain. Uh, for example, uh, let me quote again one line from the poem Brook. For men may come and men may go, but I go on for ever. So this line has been repeated many times in the poem. 
the woods are lovely dark and deep but i have promises to keep and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep children refrain is used by the poets or writers to stress on the importance of a particular line or maybe it could be the main theme of the poem here for men may come and men may go but i go on forever here uh, the mortality of human beings and the immortality of the brook has been discussed so that is the main theme of the poem and that is why this particular line has been repeated in the poem again and again and in the same way in the poem um, of robert frost uh, stop, uh, stopping by uh, the woods on a snowy evening where he talks about uh, his uh, choice between the nature and the other priorities in his life therefore he says and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep so this particular line talks about the theme of the poem so a refrain is the figure of speech where the theme of the poem is stressed and the lines are repeated again and again the next figure of speech is oxymoron what is oxymoron it's a figure of speech where two words have been uh, used which have contradictory meaning for example two things which are totally different opposite sides but they are used together you might uh, um, observe this while you are reading some of the poems in your textbook for example small crowd you might be surprised what is this small means very less in number and at the same time it has been used with crowd crowd means where there are large number of people little giant little giant giant is a huge personality and little we are saying little giant so two opposite things old news old and new old news okay so the words which have contradictory meanings two words which are totally different in meaning they are used together so this particular device is known as oxymoron and imagery children this is very interesting figure of speech which the poet uses uh, to make the poem more uh, lively you know he uses lot of words which creates pictures in your minds so imagery makes use of particular words that create a visual representation of ideas in our minds the word imagery is associated with mental pictures for example when you read a particular poem the words which the poet use creates uh, you know pictures in your minds and you feel as though you are in that particular place for a moment you try to imagine yourself in a totally different world Im uh, imagining those pictures in your mind for example it was dark and dim in the forest so immediately the picture of a forest at night comes to your mind that you imagine what would happen when it is too dark in a forest okay so the words dark and dim are visual images dark means uh, immediately the darkness come to your mind then one more example has been uh, given here the fresh and juicy orange is very cold and sweet juicy and sweet when associated with oranges have an effect on our sense of taste or gastritis sense for example the moment you read the word juicy and sweet you know the picture of oranges come to your mind the picture of uh, orange juice that is there in your fridge might come to your mind okay so you are able to imagine that so it it makes the poem more lively with lot of pictures in your mind uh, the next figure of speech which i have taken for you today is irony children irony is a figure of speech in which words are 
used in such a way that their intended meaning is different from the actual meaning of the words. It's a difference between appearance and reality. Okay. Uh, for example, let me give you one simple example to make you understand what is irony. Right. Uh, maybe one of your friends uh, gives you a cookie made by his or her mother and you taste the cookie. You didn't like it, but in front of your friend, you say, wow, what a tasty cookie. I have never had such cookies in my life. You did not like the cookie, right? So this praise is not from your heart. You are saying this just to please your friend. So that is the irony. Maybe the other friends who are there who also have the same feeling might think what a guy he is. You know, though the cookies are not tasty, he is praising the cookies like anything. So that is the irony. So one more example here. Water, water everywhere and all the boats did shrink. Water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. What is the irony here? Here, uh, this is from the poem, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, which is uh, in which the ship gets stuck in the middle of the sea and the, all the crew members of the ship, they are very thirsty. So they are surrounded by water. Water, water everywhere, everywhere there is water, but they could not drink a drop of water because they were surrounded by the sea water, which they could not drink. The saline water cannot be drunk. So though they were surrounded with water, though there was water everywhere, the irony is they were surrounded with water, but they could not drink that water. So that is the irony. Children, irony is uh, something where uh, whatever you are saying is not real. It is uh, something different from reality. You want to, you have something else in your mind or in your heart and you are saying something else. So dear children, I hope the figures of speech, at least the main figures of speech that is there in your syllabus is clear to you. Of course, there are many more figures of speech which you will be learning in higher classes. But for 9th and 10th, if you uh, understand and remember these poetic devices, uh, it will be useful for you in answering the questions related to them. Today, let's learn the first poem from your textbook, prose text, The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. That is why I began today's lesson by quoting one of the famous poets of Robert Frost. Uh, the woods are lovely, dark and deep, uh, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep because in this poem also, he is trying to make a choice between uh, the lovely uh, natural beauty which he would like to enjoy and also the other responsibilities in his life. So the poem Road Not Taken is also somewhat uh, similar to theme to this poem. Uh, of course, Robert Frost is one of the best poets who, who has tried to uh, put in his poems uh, the life of human beings, the challenges and also uh, the opportunities which they have in their life. So now Let's go to the poem. The poem will be on your screen. Please uh, watch it very carefully. Go through it and then we will discuss it. The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both. And be one traveler, long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted weir. Though as for that the passing there had worn them really about the same and both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day Yet, knowing 
how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diversed in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Now, uh, let's look at some of the words from the poem and try to know what do they mean. Diverged. Diverged means separated. Undergrowth. Bushes and shrubs. Wanted beard means uh, it has not been used and walked on frequently and uh, needed uh, repair or wear as we say. Trodden. Walked. Sigh. Uh, it means to take a deep breath out of sorrow or a regret or relief. We say a sigh of relief. So children, you just watched this poem on your screen by Robert Frost. Let's go stanza by stanza and try to understand the poem. The first stanza, uh, let me tell you children, uh, Robert Frost has uh, put forth the ideas of the choices made by human beings in their life in a very beautiful manner in this poem. Though here he talks of roads, but roads here represents the various choices or the opportunities which we get in our life and the choices we need to make. Okay. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both. Here uh, yellow wood. Wood here means forest and a, the season is of autumn uh, where the trees shed their leaf and the green leaves have become yellow. So the uh, forest with uh, trees with yellow leaves. So once uh, when the poet was uh, you know traveling and he came across uh, a yellow wood where he found two roads diverged that means separated in two different directions and since he was a single traveler so he could not take both the roads at a time so he stood there and tried to look at both the roads uh, and till where it had uh, bent in the undergrowth undergrowth means uh, we had seen it is uh, thick growth of uh, bushes uh, and shrubs okay so in the forest we see that sometimes when people don't walk on that particular road for a, maybe for some time so bushes and shrubs start growing and before you walk in it you need to clear them so he he saw both the roads and then what did he decide to do it was for him to decide now which road he need to take so he took the other road right and he thought it was better than the first one uh, because it was grassy and wanted beer. So actually people keep walking through the forest and though he had seen that people walk that road but still it wanted grassy and uh, you know it need to be uh, made it you know maybe by uh, cutting away the grasses and shrubs and making the road clear for people to walk. So he saw both the roads and one road which was used by people often and the other one which required uh, or which was grassy and wanted beer. So he decided to take the less traveled one, right? Because there are people uh, who would like to take challenges, who would like to go on adventures, right? And they don't want to do things which uh, com people often do yeah yeah which is common or uh, which many people do you know they want to do something different so he chose the other road and in the next stanza he says that though uh, both that morning equally lay for him that particular morning or maybe uh, morning here refers to the a decision again he has to make uh, between both the roads so he found both the roads again the same here he's saying same because the leaves had fallen from the trees on both the roads and uh, uh, since trodden here uh, is walked so since people had not walked so on both the roads there were leaves lying okay so both the roads seemed similar to the poet so he thought of taking the less traveled one and he said ki he will take the 
other uh, road some other day though i doubted if i should ever come back though he had a doubt whether he would come back or not right uh, i'll be uh, talking about this later once we finish this now in the last stanza the poet says i shall be telling this with a sigh children what was the meaning of sigh that means when you uh, regret something or uh, when you take a deep breath you know of uh, relief or of regret it could be sad feeling it could be happy feeling now the poet here is regretting it is the sigh of regret that after ages and ages you know somewhere after so many years he is regretting uh, his decision uh, again he is repeating the same lines two roads diverged in a wood and i took the less traveled by and that has made all the difference children here as i told you the roads are symbolic here roads represent the choices the choices which we make in our life you know life gives us many opportunities children to make lot of choices for example uh, you need to make a choice of your subjects you need to make a choice of your career you need to make a choice of what you want to do in future right uh, you need to uh, choose between lot of things even at home you have a, a chance to make choices between so many things therefore the poet here is trying to tell us or give give us the message that when we are making choices in our life we should be very careful and we should make choices and it should not be in such a way that we regret it later on right and it is also their children through the poem we understand that we also cannot predict that whether the choice we are making is going to be good for us or whether it is going to be bad for us right we can't predict that so we make choice but we need to take proper care to make the choice so that we don't regret it later so and though we know that uh, maybe sometimes the choice which we are making is going to be full of challenges okay and then when we start walking on a particular path it many other paths might open many other roads might open many other choices might be there before us which and we keep on moving and moving and moving ahead and we never look back or try to come back right for example here the poet chose the road less traveled by and opportunities open for him and he never turned back he could not come and take the other road that is what he is regretting so we don't know maybe uh, he tells this with a sigh because uh, maybe he might not have been successful in the uh, on the first road or whatever um, choices he had made therefore we need to the message is we need to be very careful while we are making choices in our life okay so we, we know that maybe sometimes we will not be able to come back once we have made a choice so uh, it's really uh, the way we make choices the way we make use of the opportunities which are there in front of us so dear children let me tell you that this year there has been a slight change in the questions which you get from the poem for example uh, till now you were getting a stanza from the poem for comprehension and you used to get four questions and four marks one marks each but this year uh, there is a change uh, you will get uh, extract and you have a choice in that question question number 7 you it can be an extract from the poem and an extract from your text so it is a choice for you and you can answer any one question so again it uh, carries four marks but this time you will get two questions two marks each of four marks right it will be very short answers and uh, therefore you must be prepared for that and then also uh, the questions which carries two marks 10 marks is there for five questions uh, in question number 8 and there also you will get uh, at least two questions from your poems so you need to uh, learn the poems accordingly to be able to answer those questions now let's look at 
one type of question maybe let's look at the first stanza and try to see what questions could be asked from them and try to answer them children i have taken four questions from stanza 1 Uh, maybe you can get any of these questions as i told you you are going to get two questions this year so let's try to understand uh, how to answer these questions for example what do the two roads symbolize the two roads symbolize the choices that we make in our life they talk about the opportunities which we get in our life and the choice which we make right so that would be the answer and you can also write it in your own creative way as i have been telling you in the previous classes also find a word from the extract which means the same as separated from one another that word is diverged right why could the poet not travel both the roads here the answer would be the poet could not travel both the roads because he was a single traveler and being a single traveler he could not travel both the roads at a time so he had to make a choice between any one of the two roads and the last question is which figure of speech has been used in the first stanza or maybe sometimes they can ask you the above stanza when it is in your question paper so if we see in the first stanza it talks about two roads diverged in a yellow wood so here the figure of speech is metaphor right uh, the roads have been compared to the opportunities or choices in life okay and also there is imagery in the first four lines uh, also in the other parts but here we, we are talking of the first four lines the yellow wood okay the forest so the moment you read the word the yellow wood you know the yellow leaves in the forest come to your mind so there is imagery there is metaphor right so you can also find out from the other lines of the poem uh, from your textbook and with a pencil you can write down since now you know what are the figures of speech so you can write down so let me tell you children here that earlier you had only one marks question now since you have uh, two questions of two marks so maybe you have to write the answer in at least 30 to 40 words uh that is why it is very important for you to understand the poem so you have to read the poem again and again try to uh, understand the meanings of difficult words with a pencil write write them down in your book and try to understand the theme of the poem since now i have told you what is the theme and what the poet is trying to tell us and uh, what uh, choices we make and how it makes a difference in our life so you try to understand the theme so that you are able to answer the questions in your question paper very well i hope you understood the poem well so you read the poem again and also try to identify the figures of speech and also you can do this for the other poems maybe initially for the four or five poems as i told you you have 10 poems in your syllabus so you can do it for at least three or four poems or five poems you can try to read them you can try to uh, figure out the poetic devices and try to uh, understand the poem uh, try to understand the beauty of the poem appreciate it and try to uh, learn them in a better way so dear children hope today's lesson was useful to you Uh, i hope you all will stay safe and stay healthy at home thank you